Hi, it's Chris, and welcome back to the C, something else Amiga. And what do we have on the show today? Today we got a box in that I sliced open from Mr. Daniel B. And inside there is a note. I can grab it. You can see I sliced it a little too deep. Just across the paper. My information. Name, Mr. Dan. His address. His email address. Issue written like a resume. <laughs> Serial port malfunction with SMD removal. Replacement caused two PASB pulls up, pulled up, and the motherboard failed to boot. I have included my emails. Dear Chris, my otherwise working A1200 had a serial port that failed to connect. When I checked it with ATK and the dongle showed pins failed. I traced these to U29 and one to U28. I reasoned the prior owner may have plugged in a 25 pin non-serial device and blown the uh, Texas Instrument 5189 chip U29. So he bought five of them. And five 5188 chips from DigiKey, thinking my luck with soldering SMD components might change. Using Chip Quick and hot air, he lifted the old one out, cleaned the area. Then I used Chip Quick soldering paste to replace the new one with a new one, the old one with a new one. And the motherboard failed to boot. Thinking I messed the process up, I removed the new chip in the same way. This time, two pads lifted off with the chip. No diagram either. No logica. I went ahead and replaced the chip and thought of a way to entice you to look at the motherboard. A box of pecan goo goo clusters. They're rarely ever found or they are rarely ever heard of by anyone who did not grow up near Nashville, Tennessee. You might find that interesting. The goo part stands for Grand Old Opry. Would you be kind enough to look at the board? Mr. Dan, thank you for the Goo Goo Cluster. I have not opened this, I just sliced it. So inside we have some buffer cardboard and a Goo Goo Cluster since 1912. Pecan, or pecan, pecan, caramel, and nougat covered in milk chocolate. And that is what they look like. 12 individually wrapped, gluten-free for you hippies, and this is what an individually wrapped Goo Goo Cluster is. I'm going to have to refrigerate these a little bit because it's been over 105 Fahrenheit degrees out all week long, and I'm sure these are one solid brick of whatever. And just get to the, get to the beast at hand. Packaged very well. Sandwiched in between some cardboard and some foam and some diagrams. So I got my work cut out for me. We got the parts. So we're foamed, we're cardboard, we're bagged. Because it's got the mouse port, which I did purchase in the past for parts, but you slid yours on. So that's, that's cool too. This board's been through the war. Now, the part we're looking up for here is going to be the top right. Is this bright enough? It's so bright in here, it's dark. can't explain it. So, right there is our guilty culprit. And all along the top, where's my finger? Here are the ceramics and the ferrite bead of death. That uh, caused the stink. But, you got to remember on a 1200, flip her over, because you're going to burn through all of these ceramics and the two resistors. I'm checking the ferrites, because if they crack, they will prevent power flow. Think of it as like a poor man's cheap fuse. Nothing bridging two pins. Say old piece of brown plastic. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. We got a bent pin on the floppy port that's touching another pin. Um, anyway, there's a pin over here that's bent and touching a pin up there. But we're going to start with probing out what was done. And then we'll take it from there. I gotta make sure nothing's grounded, nothing's crossed. I too will fire up Amiga PCB. I have a second set of eyes and even a microscope third set of eyes. We're gonna backtrack. We do have spare chips for both. Uh, I'm gonna get this chip out of here. Glued down with chip quick. The back of this 
I guess the second solder just obliterated all the pads on the top there. You can see right here, looks like there's four. There's one, two, three, and some solder balls underneath. Let me clean this up. This is really bad off. So I think what happened was when this was put on, the chip quick lifted a leg or the second extraction and solder paste looked like legs, but it was not. You can see the top, we got three teeth. We're supposed to have what, eight? Yeah, we're missing four pads. So here we are in U29 land, a non-connect. Great, I love that. In. Out. CIA. Non-connect. And in. So, connector six, serial in, in out to CIA. It shouldn't prevent the Amiga from booting though unless you blew the CIA. Alright, so I have removed U29 entirely from the bus. Now what we're gonna do, so we know we don't have any cross connects, we just have ripped traces, we will use the Gennard IC extractor. Links in the description below for all the tools that I use. So, and what that does is this, just so you know, this grabs the chip on the end and when you squeeze she just pulls her up from the socket. Then you can push up and she opens her grips and you are able to remove your chip. So as you squeeze said chip, it not only grabs down but pulls up. So it grips and pulls safely because this part sits over top of the dip like so. So you don't bork it and then you just click it and it pulls right up. You don't damage any pins. You don't scratch your chip all up also either blood or sacrificial human juice yeah I bet you could use a cool one huh now you're talking these sockets have seen better days for that we're gonna use a bronze brush it's a little bit abrasive -er, more abrasive than plastic of course but I'm using it on the socket uh, it's metal of the socket Dry the part, pull the donut off the back so she blows really good, and then you just go like this and it'll dry it in a second. I got one artificial lung left. This is called Surf On, dude, and it's a Walmart branded uh, can air. Let's blow this off. What the hell is that? So, some bug just jumped out of that board. Execute them. I Lorraine is his head off. Bogus. <laughs> what in the hell? Where did that come from? The port? This port is full of chip quick flux. It's full of it's blackness. We need diagram, 32-bit edition. It's two chips. Can you get in the holes? There we go. Okay, so the Godfather's light dude is here. So we can watch it. Low and a, we get fast blinking. We do get diagram. So the Amiga sort of lives. All right. The Amiga lives. Thank goodness. We have mouse, so our CIA should be good. Let's do a experimental test CIAs because it does each and or. Click the start. This is a PAL unit. So hopefully these are all okay. The tick is the display. Better. High five! Oh. These are okay because they are expensive. Let's do a memory test real quick. Okay, as you can see, we got two megabytes of chip. Let's talk to Mr. Thomas Andrews about the VCF East swap meet thing in the open car park parking lot in New Jersey a couple hundred miles away from us and uh, about a three hour drive for me six for him and it's 104 degrees outside in the open sun with no clouds no overcast you're just gonna burn 
The only Amiga stuff for sale was an Amiga 2000. He wanted six hundred dollars for at a swap meet. Good luck with that. The CIA's appear to test good. But I'm going to turn this off for just a moment, and we're going to hook up my Amiga test kit slash diagram dongles of test so we can check for power and this one's not going to work okay it might work a little bit but it's not going to work because half of its io is gone there's lights on the green light a red and an orange and what they do is they they light up so what we can do is we can do port test and we'll do parallel port and that'll run through parallel and tell me with the loopback adapter that it's okay now we'll do the serial port tells you to do the loopback adapter click and we're not getting anything bad 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 membership in the jelly of the month club <laughs> RTS CTS cannot connect well that's because the chip is missing and all of its pins are missing for input input output all four channels uh, op amp LF347 is good Mr. Carl from Retro32 said, Hey man, I just saw you got totally effed on those keyboard connectors for that 1200 you repaired a while back. And then Mr. Badmore needed help with Pi Omega 4. Yep, four months, five months old now, Pi Omega 4 is. We're going to put the Amiga Kickstarts back in and see what we get. I think there was some lines bridged. And we'll also give a kiss to these. These are Kickstart 3s. A low and a high on the Hertel light video blank. Floppy terminators in. Gray screen of death. But, let her sit. No IDE system. 3.0 kickstart ROMs. The Amiga lives again. Woohoo! So that's a start. Uh, we'll do the parallel test first. Green is good. Green is good. Alright, so now that fixes the first step. In comparison to the printouts here of the original so that's right, so that's that one serial is not going to work because just like before two three five six eight twenty and twenty two so twenty two is good um, or twenty two is bad twenty is good so on the same thing because of that chip that is totally missing and the, the printout here of what it is hi I'm wearing a different shirt because I took a shower it's 104 degrees outside. Do you notice anything on that third, fourth, fifth pin there? See that darkness level of crust on the bottom of the uh, right in right in there, the crusties. I think that's transmit and receive. That's TXD RXD, and I even double checked it on the old uh, Mega PCB Explorer. And right there, that's transmit, and her girlfriend above her is RXD. Now, I don't know if Paula's toast, because Paula does way more than audio, people. It's not the only the audio chip. It's got all sorts of interrupts and lines and magic. It controls a lot of your floppy I.O. Read, write, motor start. So don't think that Paula is just an audio chip. She is way more. All of the custom chips in the Amiga are way more than their basic function that you all know them by. Hi, it's another day. And uh, I'm going to remove U28. Second line buffer. Or line driver. With some thinner Captain Tape. And I tape the living crap out of everything. Why? Because tape is cheap. Don't chintz on your tape. For this endeavor, we're going to be using the WEP 853 solder station multi 3 in 1 with hot air. There we go. Put that cool down. There we go. As you can see, said chip is now in. Clean up the area. Soak her down. Especially under that CIA, because I don't feel like replacing it. 
We'll see the floppy init here for a second because no DF0. Saw it, there's the floppy. When it blips and can't find it, it will then go to this drive and we should see an image. There we go. My monitor's a little dim because it's warming up. We're going to go into serial parallel. We're going to just do the serial test. Bingo, all green. So our problem was both U28 and U29. U29 was missing some pads. So Mr. Daniel should be extremely pleased that his Amiga 1200 has been repaired and is functional again. Now you can use your old dial-up modem. All is well in the land of Amiga 1200s again. So that is a repair of your serial port line drivers U29, U28. If your serial port fails the test, two little line driver chips went bad, owner provided replacements. Even better. So that is another Amiga saved. What are we at? Oh man, lost my paper again. That's number 286. 286 Amigas have been saved with your help recently, and I thank you, Goal. Goal, I thank you all so much. If you're interested in helping me to continue to save Amigas by joining my patron for a li as little as one dollar a month or more if you're rich. Oh, is that all the thanks I get? I spend more on lunch in one day. Would you like some chicken? I've got more. But you can help me con to continue to save the machines that we love and hold near and dear to our heart. Now, it doesn't cover everything, but it greatly reduces my costs in parts supplies and things that I need to make these repairs for you for free. So thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Special thanks to all my patrons and I will see you guys the next time. Thank you for watching and as always I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.